This is a 1963 Fender Concert with a harmonic tremolo. The uh, power transformer is from 62. The choke is from 63. And the uh, output transformer is from 1960. First thing I do before I do anything else is I make sure that the hardware is tight. These things get loose over the years and I don't want one to fall out and damage anything while it's on my bench. So far these are all pretty good. This one looks like it's gotten a little bit loose over the years. As you can tell the uh, output tube sockets have been changed and when that change was made no bear trap retainers were put in place. Uh, I will install those. It really does help secure tubes, particularly in a hang down amp like a fender. But anyway, let's go over here. Sorry about the shaky cam work. Let's remove the doghouse cover and see what we got. Okay, good news, bad news. It's been recapped, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is it's got IC brand caps, which I don't trust as far as I can throw them. Actually, no, I could throw these a lot farther than I could trust them. And uh, Aerovox Mallory's. Um, I don't know how to read the date code on those. It does not matter. They're all going to get changed out for F&Ts. But whoever did this did a fairly good job. Um, I need to look at the original schematic because this board is not set up to have balanced resistors with a series uh, capacitance here. That's what they've done. I think the original just had two in parallel and I want to make sure that I get this uh, to original spec in terms of the behavior, though um, there can be good reasons to use series on these given modern wall, modern wall voltages. So I will look at that, but I can tell you that all these are just going to get snipped out. And I want to know that as of 2021, it has brand new caps, which are all working correctly. Let's look at the other side. All right, let's see what we can see. They rebuilt the majority of the bias board with new uh, diodes and a new cap, and they've installed an adjustable bias. That much is good. The old uh, resistor here, this one watt, is still remaining. That's usually okay. Um, grounds are done to chassis. Not beautifully in all cases. This one's a, a, a kludgy joint, but overall pretty well. I will remove the bias, sorry, the heater center tap and put in some balance resistors. Not only does it give a better balance, but it can offer some protection in case of a short. Um, they've got the AC safety ground going to this terminal strip. I'm going to remove that and do that. Well, I'll probably remove that and do that to chassis and take this terminal strip out and um, I will use the uh, soon to be disconnected from anything ground switch as a junction for the neutral. And I'll check that the fuse is properly wired. Looks to be. Let's see if they have the correct fuse in there. That's a rare thing when it has the correct fuse on these older amps. Three amps. All right, good. So no one's been trying to kill it. As far as the output sockets go, these ceramics are not my favorite, but there's nothing intrinsically wrong with them. Um, you can tell by the discoloration on the chassis in the past that uh, there was some heat failures here. And I suspect I know who did this work and I don't think I'm gonna find any problems with this work. I've got some bias measuring resistors here, which I don't find useful, but there's nothing intrinsically wrong with them. Um, let's see what else we can see. Those caps have been changed out, orange drops. They're uh, 6PS, good. They're the polyester ones, they're the good ones. Some of the good ones, SPS and 418 and 225Ps. You got some half watt metal films here. 
and throughout there's half watt and one watt metal films and some half watt and one watt carbon films. Yeah, I know who did this work and he does good work. Um, combination of Panasonic and Zycon caps here. It's all been recapped fairly well. Um, almost all of the uh, caps in the single path have been changed out. Let's check. We'll take a look at these silver micas. Yeah, these say SM. The ones which just say SM have a high failure rate. They begin to leak and make make noise, and that's not a um, a fault of of the guy who did this work, who's not the uh, person whose stickers on here. So this is an old service sticker, because um, uh, the failure with the ones which are labeled SM was a uh, more recent uh, problem. So these might be fine, but in general you want the ones that uh, CD makes. CDM, CDE, I can't remember. Anyway, um, I think this might be a little bit on the non-interesting sounding side with all these metal films in here, but it could sound just fine. Um... I'm not seeing any real big problems in this amp, other than some old uh, filter caps, some not beautiful solder joints on the old pots, and everything's dirty. Um, so I'll take these input jacks out and clean everything, and I expect I'll have to clean the pots. But I'm not seeing anything yet which is giving me the heebie-jeebies or the uh-ohs I know those are highly technical terms. But I think this amp's in good enough condition right now, unless one of those um, filter caps is failing, that I can go ahead and put the uh, power tubes back in and bring this up on a current limiter and a voltage limiter and see where we're at, maybe listen to it. I may not have to do much more beyond some basic cleaning. Uh, I won't know until I hear it. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, uh, the initial problem I found is that one of the two 6L6s was dead. It was drawing no, uh, no current whatsoever. So I've got a test pair of 6L6s in here, and I biased about 53%, which is a fine place for it to be for, for now. Um, and all the pots were very dirty, and uh, several of the tubes are microphonic. The one that was in the phase inverter was especially so. So um, once that's done, here's the normal channel. <laughs> I can get that base cleaned up a little bit more. Let's take a look at the, at the uh, tremolo vibrato channel. Let's see how the tremolo is doing. So overall pretty good, except for that massive thudding. Now there can be a lot of causes for that in these amps. It could be a mismatch in a resistor, one of these old resistors could be driving too hard. The 470Ks over here are pretty close tolerance, uh, 470K metal films, I'm not too concerned about that. It can be lead dress, it can be a capacitor which is not blocking what it should be blocking. I'll have to get into that because this should, thudding can happen at the extremes but it shouldn't uh, be the, that prominent. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, the filter caps that are in it for right now are still working okay, and that's not causing this main issue. I'm still going to change them because I don't trust IC filter caps, and this is uh, an amp that belongs to a friend of mine. It has a lot of sentimental value as well as the obvious value. Presence is kind of scratchy. More so than you would get from the normal present circuit. But it's working. Very microphonic tube there. I have certainly heard an awful lot worse, and I'm very confident that we can make this sound an awful lot better. I think some of the uh, wires are going to get replaced just because, let me show you this, when a cloth covered wire is this discolored, it is just soaked up a lot of stuff, which means that it is not going to be insulating very well. If you compare that to the cloth covered wires down here, which are st still fairly yellow, these are going to be in better shape, and uh, I'll also talk to him, to my own, the owner of my friend, to see whether he just wants it working a lot better or whether he wants it perfect. And by perfect, I mean any um, thing which is not just the stuff which is contributing to the sound, but would he like this all restored as close as possible to '63 stuff? Would he like um, to have um, everything done just so. Uh, I think that's a conversation for a later day though. First I've got to uh, measure the board, make sure we don't have any straight DC, which could also be contributing to that thudding, do a lot of playing around with the lead dress and stuff. I've got a lot of sleuthing to do. Um, I cannot give him an accurate estimate um, until I know exactly what all is suboptimal. <laughs> things are working they're such great apps it's worth taking the time to do it right and again um, nothing in the previous work was wrong though I'm not as big a fan of metal films and old fenders throughout the entire circuit as others are um, I would rather use carbon films than metal films in most places and there are a couple places I think carbon composites can make a difference that can be worth the, the potential trade-off in noise, but uh, that's an entirely different subject. Right now I'm going to focus on why this amp is thudding and, you know, that could be preamp tubes and stuff. So I've got a lot of little ticky-tacky stuff to, to go through before I do any stuff with a soldering iron. Here's a good example of the stuff I've got to look for on these things. With the amp on but in standby, at this grid feed to uh, the leftmost power tube, the bias is at negative 55.5, and at this one, the other grid, negative 55.5. If I take it out of standby though, which means that the tube is active and there's B plus on this side, 283 volts there. This goes down to 54.7 and this goes to 52.6. Now that could be leakage through one of these two caps or it could be a problem with one of the two tubes that I put in or it could be a problem with the tube sockets. Now those sockets are the fairly standard um, relatively inexpensive if I say so myself ceramics, um, which are not immune to carbon paths, and these 
uh, 6PS orange drops very rarely leak, but this would indicate that there might be some leakage and there probably is some leakage. So it's either leaking through the capacitor, probably on this side, which is drawing it less negative, or it's a problem with the tube emission on the grid, or it's a problem with the tube socket. So these are the things that stand between pretty good amp and a great app. And it's a lot of little things like this. And I've just got to go in there and do some stuff to find out what, but I've done it before. I can do it again. Okay. With the amp on, but in standby, negative 56.4, negative 56.4. Take it out of standby. This one is at fifty five four negative fifty four point five negative. Let's check and see if these caps are leaking at all. No leakage there. No leakage there. So the caps are fine, as I suspected. Uh, these 6PS caps are really good. So now there's either a problem with the output tubes or with the socket. So let me try a different pair of tubes. I could also just swap the tubes around see if it, if it follows the socket, but I'd rather get rid of that entirely because that bias difference in the output is not a good, safe thing to have. All right, now with those caps reconnected, in standby, 57.5, 57.3, it's fluctuating a little bit with the wall voltage. Take it out of standby, 56. Let's call it five. 56. Call call it point five. So okay, that bias difference I was measuring was a result of those Svetlana wing C's. So those old Svetlana wing C's um, that I had in there where the bias was drifting, these are no good. They go in the trash. I'm not a sentimentalist about such things. Be careful. Some people are selling those things for like $70 a pair, and there's uh, no guarantee that a new pair for $70 is going to be any better than that pair I just threw away. Anyway, this is the kind of thing you've got to go through and amp this old and uh, narrow down to what the actual problems are and where the solutions are.